Hey fellow workers, my name is Kim Siever. Welcome back to my channel. So a couple weeks ago, I expounded on what exactly is the working class and who belongs to the working class. And a viewer reached out to me afterwards to suggest that I could have expanded on people who are part of the working class, but others wouldn't generally see them as the working class. I thought it was a great suggestion, so I've decided to do a short series expanding on my original video. Each week, I'll publish a new video in the series exploring one of the groups that seems to be sitting outside what people People consider to be the working class. In my last video, I explored whether self-employed people are working class. This week, I mentioned the question of whether stay-at-home parents are working class. On the surface, we might be tempted to say that no, they're not since they're not working for an employer, but I don't think that's fair to the role stay-at-home parents play in the economy. Before we get to that, however, let's review what I mean by working class. In my original video, I mentioned that belonging to the working class depends on one's relationship to the means of production. If one owns or controls the means of production, then one belongs to the owning class. Otherwise, one belongs to the working class. As I indicated in that video, means of production is also called the four factors factors of production in economics, that is land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. And by that definition, state-owned parents, at least generally speaking, are working class since they don't own the means of production. Now, of course, there may indeed be some state-owned parents who do indeed own the means of production. Perhaps they own a company, for example, but they primarily serve an advisory role at the company and spend most of their time managing affairs at home. I anticipate that such examples are not the norm. However, there is another factor to consider when determining whether state-owned parents are working class their labor. Stay-at-home parents do most of the work at home. They're more likely to cook the meals, do the laundry, do the dishes, clean the house, and so on. And full bellies, clean clothes, and a healthy home are critical for a productive workforce. Without the labor of the stay-at-home parents, members of the paid workforce would be less productive. Plus, they're raising future workers too. To be fair, there are plenty of parents who perform unpaid household labor, yet also participate in the workforce. So I'm not suggesting only stay-at-home parents perform unpaid household labor, only that they do perform labor that contributes to the economy in material ways. Keep in mind that the labor performed by stay-at-home parents is duplicated in various ways in the paid workforce. For example, daycares care for children while parents are at work, just as stay-at-home parents do. House cleaners, well, clean houses, just as stay-at-home parents do. Food service workers cook food, just as stay-at-home parents do. Laundry workers wash clothes and bedding, just as stay-at-home parents do, and so on. And if daycare workers, house cleaners, food service workers, and laundry workers are considered working class, then surely stay-at-home parents can be considered working class for performing the same labor. So, are stay-at-home parents working class? Yes barring a few exceptions. Generally, they don't own the means of production, they care for paid members of the working class, they're raising future paid workers, and the labor they perform is mirrored by paid workers in various service sectors. Solidarity.